So conventionally, the trust is always seen as a very, very old school instrument to do succession planning. So when people think, oh, you know, crypto is so new, what can we possibly do about it? So, but that's of course, you know, where DBS is always very innovative. We're going to think out of the box. So when we said that um, internally, if DBS private bank can offer DBS exchange um, to clients to buy and trade, cryptos by the same token there's no reason why these uh, cryptos which are purchased through an exchange which is controlled by dbs bank shouldn't be part of what we can hold as trust assets so of course then we sought the advice of many uh, lawyers in town to make sure that there's nothing against the very nature of cryptos that make it unsuitable for trust assets holding and they have said check the box no issues it's number one number two it's also more about the safe room environment when clients purchase cryptos within dbs both in terms of the source of funds and in terms of the way the cryptos are being traded there will be a very clear record kept of all these trades and there will be no discrepancy about where, where these cryptos are from, is it uh, legit? So all these issues will fall away. So once the clients cross the barrier and come into the exchange in this safe room environment, we provide the follow-up solution for them to then pass on these assets to the loved ones. Because if you can imagine, if they buy you know, cryptos through other exchanges, whether it's Coinbase, Binance, all that, for them to really be able to transfer these cryptos in these exchanges to their children and loved ones, they have to have a mechanism when they will pass on, maybe say their key to these tokens and these key to these exchanges to the loved ones. And that's where there's a lot of manual intervention required and a lot of manual effort required because if you forget your password, if you forget how to pass these to your children, then what does it all end? And it, let's say if you disclose these tokens or these passwords, in the world, for instance, then the whole world gets to see it. So, you know, then, then you can't really, really do a clear and precise distribution without the whole world knowing about your assets succession planning schemes. More and more clients are saying that we, we do intend to increase um, our share of our assets in cryptocurrencies and we see it increasing over time, which is why we felt that it was important for us to find a solution that could address issues of confidentiality, um, peace of mind, safekeeping for our clients. Right now, crypto is in the virtual world. Nobody quite knows where it is. But if someone says, that, oh, because your exchange is in the States, for instance, and, and therefore any cryptos that's purchased through an exchange that's stores out in the States, we consider it to be U.S. CITUS assets and we want to treat it tax-wise as a U.S. CITUS assets, then you have a problem because if you are a Singaporean person, a Hong Kong person buying a U.S. CITUS asset such as shares of Apple or Amazon, the minute these assets cross the value of 60,000 U.S. dollars, you pay 40% U.S. XD duty taxes. So God forbid this applies to cryptocurrencies. So Right now, there's no clarity in this area. So our clients are saying that, well, instead of like leaving this to chance or waiting to see what unfolds, if I know that I can have a structure like a trust, they will address all these tax issues because once it's in a trust environment, this is no longer owned by me as a Singaporean or Hong Kong person. This is owned by the trustees and therefore it takes these assets outside the ambit of any estate duty tax net. So that's also the tax angle, which made it very attractive for clients to consider a trust to hold these assets for long-term succession and long-term tax optimization. The Singapore government has also been very present in trying to um, anticipate the needs of ultra high net worth families. So the family office regime in Singapore, which offers tax exemption for qualified clients, and also it offers um, residency status for ultra high net worth families who fulfill the 200 million AUM requirements. All these are what makes Singapore really attractive for some of these clients who are not just looking for a place to be based, but also a place which will embrace the next decade or the next two decades of the future legacy and asset growth in new areas such as cryptos.